In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I switched from an auto bed leveling sensor to a mechanical Z style end stop. And the reason for doing this is reliability. Now I've had nothing but problems with the proximity style switches. BL touch hasn't been so bad, but proximity style switches I find have been very unreliable for me. This printer came with one. This is a ET5X printer from ANET. Now, every once in a while, when I go to home the Z axis, the print head rams itself into the print bed and does not stop. And so this can cause mechanical damage to the printer. And obviously I want to avoid that. It's been a really annoying problem. And to switch back to a mechanical style switch is going to increase reliability. Of course, I'm going to lose the mesh leveling feature of uh, this particular printer. But in my opinion, this is more of a marketing gimmick for desktop printers. The print beds on desktop printers typically aren't that big. And I find that at least if it's of moderate quality, the variations in the surface of the print bed aren't enough that it warrants a mesh leveling system. Other people might disagree with me, but I've had way more success with just regular bed leveling than with mesh leveling. And so I'm going to be switching this printer back and be showing you guys how to do that yourself. It's applicable to more than just these, this ANET printer. Uh, ANET, Creality, they all have similar sort of frame setups. And so the design files that I made available should be also applicable to Creality printers with a similar setup. So let's go through the whole thing from wiring to design work and I'll show you guys how to do the same conversion. Let's get started. And so what we're looking at here is the back of the ET5X printer and there is a PCB where all the hot end connections are made. And so right now I'm pointing at the auto bed leveling sensor connection, three wires. Uh, that make up that connector there. Up in the top left, there's an unpopulated connector and it says SZ, that would be for a limit switch. Now in this case, I did confirm that that does not work. So you can't just plug something in there. Uh, so we're gonna have to work with the connector from the auto bed leveling sensor. And so if you're using a Creality printer, the, all of these connections will come down onto your actual main board. Um, but on the ANET, there's this sort of like sub board that everything is connected to. And so I've gone ahead and I've unplugged the auto bed leveling sensor and you can see the three wires. There's a black, blue, and a brown. Uh, so the brown wire is 24 volts. The blue is just your ground and the black wire is the signal wire. And so the signal gets pulled to ground when the auto bed leveling sensor comes into range with your print bed. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a limit switch take the place of the auto bed leveling sensor. And this little limit switch here that I found, which is a replacement part for a Creality printer. So this is a, I think a Y or X uh, axis limit switch. It has a three pin JST connector and it just turns out that it's exactly the same series of JST connector for the uh, ANET board here. And so this is the PH style JST connector. It's a two and a half millimeter pitch. And I've just created a small wiring harness to go from the ANET board to the Creality end stop switch. And so if you have a Creality machine, you have to check out on your board, which type of connector you have, but you can just buy these little connectors and some pre-terminated wires and you can make a little harness. And so you'll notice I'm only using two of the three wires. The red wire is connected to the signal pin and the blue wire is connected to the ground pin, which is the middle pin on the ANET board. Again, on a Creality printer, you might have to poke and prod around a little bit with your multimeter to figure out which one is which. But on the limit switch, the two pins used are the two pins that make up the normally open configuration. So you can see here that I have it mounted on my X axis gantry and with the uh, print head moved all the way over such that the print head now makes contact with the X limit switch, it is not interfering with the Z limit switch. And essentially in this wiring configuration, we're gonna test it out. And what you'll see happen here is that I'm gonna hit Z home on my printer and it's gonna to attempt to home the Z axis. I'm gonna use my finger just to press the limit switch that we just installed on uh, for the Z axis. And in the uh, firmware setup for the ANET printer, because we were previously using a proximity switch, it's gonna trip that proximity switch. It's gonna pull the signal to ground telling the controller that we've hit the limit switch. It's gonna think we're still using the proximity switch. It's gonna bounce the print head back up about 10 or so millimeters. And then it's gonna come in for a slower approach to re-trigger that limit switch. With the electronics resolved, I then designed this mechanical part to be 3D printed. And this is going to be the adjustable Z limit stop. So we got the switch in place. And now this guy here with the thumb screw is going to be able to adjust that green bumper. 
and by turning the thumb screw, it brings the bumper up and down to give you micro adjustment using an M3 screw with a half millimeter pitch. So you get a nice fine adjustment to really dial in your uh, Z height. Next, I gathered up the parts. So I got my 3D printed parts here that I just showed you in CAD. And then I have my hardware. So there's two M3 by 10 socket head cap screws. There's an M3 by 20 socket head cap screw. There's an M3 brass insert. So this is just a threaded brass insert, an M3 nylock nut. And then I have the T-slot nuts for the framing. You can 3D print them like you see in the red piece there, or you can get metal ones if you want something a little bit stronger. So these are metal ones here and they have a little uh, ball spring retainer there to keep tension on them while you tighten the nuts. So assembling this is very, very simple. First, I'm gonna start with the thumb screw. There's a hexagonal receptacle on the one side and we're going to just drop in that M3 nylock nut. So it should just pop and slightly press into place. Then we can slip that into the main body of the 3D printed parts. And looking at it from the bottom, you'll see that the holes line up. And now you can insert the longer M3 by 20 socket head cap screw, and you can tighten it down. Just take note, you're gonna need one that is fully threaded. With the screw fully threaded in, you can now see that the thumb screw turns, and this will turn the male portion of the thread there that's sticking up inside of that square hole. Now we can take a look at the bumper piece and in the bumper piece, we're gonna insert this brass threaded insert. And there's a hole on the bottom that's meant for it to go in there. And to do that, we're gonna use some heat. Now a standard uh, soldering iron will do the trick. However, I did build this heat set press a while back and I will put the link to the video to that up in the top right hand corner of the screen so you can see how I built that. But here you'll see the tool in action. And so the soldering iron heats up, it transfers heat to the brass insert, and that will then melt its way into the plastic piece, embedding itself in there permanently and makes a very strong threaded connection. Now, if you do not have one of these machines, you don't wanna build one and you don't wanna use a threaded brass insert, you can of course just redesign the file very simply. It's a pretty much a square part and you can design it to be threaded so you can just thread the plastic and it'll work just the same. And now I'll take the bumper piece and I will insert it into the main body. So that brass threaded insert on the bottom there will connect to the M3 by 20 screw and I can simply just turn it in the downward direction as indicated on the part and you'll see that the bumper is drawn down. So I'll draw it down into the zero position and so that gives me five more millimeters of downward adjustment and about five to seven, I think, millimeters of upward adjustment. And so when you install this onto your printer, you use the T-slot framing to make your course adjustments with that bumper at the zero position. And so you'll see here that I'm installing it onto the framing right below the end stop switch. And so again, I'm inserting my T-slot nuts and then I'm gonna be attaching that whole main body using those two M10 socket head cap screws to the T-slot nuts. And again, I'm gonna be doing the course adjustment first. One other important thing to take note of here is that the installation is done with the nozzle already at Z0. And so you can see that the bumper is at zero and the limit switch is contacting the bumper. And so we should be in the general range right now. Like I said, the course adjustment should be done such that now we will turn the printer on and lift the print head up, re it down and make any fine adjustments to the adjustment knob that we need to make. Now I sped this clip up a little bit, but we're gonna try out this process right now. So I've hit home on my printer. It's gonna try and home the Z axis. The bumper seems to be working. Now in this firmware, it brings the print head up to a safe Z height of five millimeters. So I have to manually bring it back down to zero and then try and slip that business card underneath. In this particular case, it was a little bit too tight. So I'm going to move over to the fine adjustment screw, move the bumper up ever so slightly and try and rehome. So the process is gonna happen again. It's gonna home, successfully hit that bumper bring it back up to a safe Z height. I manually bring it down and success, it worked. And so that covers the conversion of this printer. Now, don't forget the design files are available in the video description down below. 
And those design files should be applicable to more than just the ET5X from ANET. They should also probably work on the ET4, the regular ET5, as well as many other Creality printers as well, since they do share a similar frame design. And after all, I am using a Creality uh, mechanical end stop there. So again, I can't imagine that these parts won't work on Creality printers as well. So I hope this helps you guys out in converting your printer back to a mechanical uh, end stop that it should be a lot more reliable than a proximity switch. And if you guys found this video helpful in any sort of way, please drop a like on this video. If you have questions, put them in the comment section down below. I try and get back to everybody. Thanks for watching.